It's Wednesday. Got some superhero and news to talk about. Just some little stuff that came about. This is Digital Charcuterie. My name is James. Joining me today is Scotty Hawk from Hawk's Holocron here on YouTube. Check him out. Scotty, thanks for joining me. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me again, man. Always have yeah. fun here talking about DC hype. It's always fun talking about a lot of DC stuff. It's 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 not it's Marvel, obviously, about. but DC is ramping up, man. They are <laughs> ramping up. We got so today, for those of you who don't know, we, this is a new show, but we're just going to talk about whatever superhero stuff might have been left over from yesterday, Super Tuesday and whatnot. Uh, but if you have an email you want us to talk about, digitalsharkcouterie at gmail.com is where you find us. we got some topics today. We're going to talk Batgirl, Blue Beetle, and Batman going on. Scotty's here to talk to me about it. It's going to be great because DC is, like you said, is ramping up. Like 2022, 2023, is, DC is looking for like, the hierarchy of the DC universe is about to change as the rock. Likes to say. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but it is changing and we're going to get into blue beetle in a little bit, but blue beetle switched from HBO max to theaters. Batgirl is still in HBO max. They kind of doubled down on that and said, it's going to be December, 2022 for Batgirl. So that's still sticking there, but blue beetle, they seem to have high hopes for, and that's uh, hitting the theater in August, which I think Scotty is a great, release date for a movie like blue beetle because you see guardians of the galaxy succeeded in august ninja turtles the first michael bay ninja turtles succeeded greatly in august and i think a, a property that is not as well known but is blue beetle i think it could really succeed in august yeah and it's like the end of the summer most of the big blockbusters are already out of the way people are still buzzing from all of that so uh, i can't remember what's kind of releasing around the same time but the fact that they're moving it to a movie is very promising too for me. Yeah. It makes you think that they've got something, something happening there. We, you sent me this picture right here. Yeah. This is concept art. This is, this looks wild. Yep. This is Jamie Reyes. And, uh, I did a little, I did a little breakdown. I tried, you know, to get the edited YouTube type video out there. Uh, The, there's a hint in the background too that cord industries, uh, I can't remember the dude's name, but his last name is Cord. Eventually, he is an iteration of the Blue Beetle, too. So we could see the lineage. Um, this other guy, Grant, he's the one that finds the Scarab originally. I'll be really uh, interested to see how much lore we get. Yeah, because they I, it seems like they might be doing what they did. with. They might be taking that Ant-Man approach, right? Where they're like, it yeah. works so well with Ant-Man. It was flawless. Like, you know, some mm-hmm. people said, how are you going to start off with that Ant-Man? Well, they did it beautifully, <laughs> I think. But this, you know, it, we're talking a little bit before we got on here. And I was saying how um, the, the director, Manuel Soto, com- Angel Manuel Soto, compared, like he said, this movie is going to be similar to Drive and Pacific Rim. And have you seen Drive or Pacific? I Rim? love Drive. Don't the colors in this picture remind you of Drive a little bit? Like there, there's yeah. something in that. Yeah, you can it's see how he's like, moved. Like uh, it's almost like he got there real fast, and you can see the lights in the background, like uh, headlights when you take a picture and cars are yes. driving. Yeah, yeah, I gotta tell really you, cool. Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was never my favorite character. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's anybody, but I, I got to be honest with you, Injustice Two. I have enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I love Injustice. I love the games Injustice, but Injustice mm-hmm. Two, I, I'm terrible, but I rock it as Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle is my favorite to be in that game because I am, I am way better than I should be as Blue Beetle. And uh, every <laughs> time when you play the story mode, you get to be Blue Beetle. I'm like, thank you. I'll be able to beat this guy. <laughs> I'll be so able funny. to win this level. Yeah. So I'm excited for the Blue Beetle movie because now I'm a hardcore Blue Beetle fanboy based solely on In Solo Two. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Angel. Where, uh, Man- where he, where this character really shines for me is the cartoon stuff, like Young Justice. Yeah. And I can't remember the, the names of the cartoons, but yeah. yeah. And he was in Smallville, if you remember. He was, he was a performance in Smallville. Oh, no Not, kidding. I- definitely, the, the cartoons are definitely... I'm with you on there. Like He's shown in the cartoons. I think kids are more inclined. But, mm-hmm. I get, but we're going to talk a little bit about the kids, because... I don't know if this is going to be for kids if you compare it to Drive. Pacific Rim, yes. Right. Drive, maybe not so much. <laughs> and, Scotty, much like uh, this character was a Charlton comic character. First Fox Comics had him, then Charlton got him. And that's also where Peacemaker came from. The, so they're, mm. they're related in that sense. But I don't... I don't. The characters are very different. They're not the same. They're not similar at all. And obviously James Gunn is very different from Soto, I'd imagine. So I don't think we're going to see any 
comparisons between these two characters, but they, they were brought up as uh, blood brothers in, in comic book world. Director Angel Manuel Soto did a interview uh, somewhat recently, I believe, uh, but it was in it was in Spanish, and I can't speak it. So I, I found mm-hmm. uh, I found on a breakdown on Reddit if you want to trust it or not. I kind of went over it, and uh, and he says a few things, but mostly uh, just the the look is going to be very Young Justice and Brave and the Bold. Um, and Blue Beetle and talks about what Blue Beetle means to Latin Americans. And the three, there's three films actually he mentions Drive, Pacific Rim, and they can't f- completely understand what they're thinking. Akira, Akira could be the third one. That actually, actually, that could be the, the bridge mm. that binds them all together is those three. So, mm-hmm. what do you think of what do you think of do you, how familiar are you with um, the character and the actor that they have playing him? That I will let you pronounce his name. <laughs> I try to pronounce the name in my video and uh, you just got to say it really fast and then move on. And if you get it wrong, it's okay. Um, but I'm hyped. What was the, what was your original question? I was like, it's just it's focused exciting. in on, um, well, because the- you, you mentioned peacemaker and yeah. when you look up this character and you do like the Wikipedia, whatever they have met, like, mm-hmm. I can't remember which Blue Beetle it is, but he's met Peacemaker. And then, you know, light spoiler for Peacemaker show, there's an episode where there's, like, alien stuff going on. Yeah. And you're looking at the stuff like, hmm, you know, where'd this come from, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of some kind. But, yeah, like, there could be connections all over the place that they're setting up that we don't really know about. Yeah, if you're looking at like the higher the, the DC as a whole now coming mm-hmm. together, they seem to have a firm grasp on it. James Gunn, you would think, is in on that. Obviously, he had Batman and um, and Cyborg in that end shot of the Peacemaker finale. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. Sorry about that. But you, you know, he's he's got he knows something, so maybe there is a connection there to Blue Beetle, and maybe Blue Beetle was a character he wanted to to toy with, and they said no, we've got other plans for him. But mm-hmm. I don't know how it's it's. It, there's something going on here because it was moved from HBO Max to the theaters, and I I've been thinking for a while that the HBO Max is going to be, is going to be where we get kind of like the the not the top tier superheroes, but mm-hmm. the mid level mid tier superheroes like Batgirl and maybe Blue Beetle, and they can live there and they can have their own universe. Peacemaker, yes. they can have their own universe, and I love that Peacemaker is now on the same level as these characters. Like, yeah, there's man. nothing, you know, like a year ago, no one knew who Peacemaker was. Now he's everyone's favorite superhero. But HBO Max seemed like perfect, but now they're moving into theaters, which tells me um, that either I, that this movie is going to be good, that they have a plan, that this is fitting into a larger universe. But it also questions me about Batgirl. Why is Batgirl staying in HBO Max? Right. And I think DC has the liberty to kind of do these things because they have a multiverse that in like historically they have just not connected if they don't want to. They use like yeah. crisis events to do these things. And it's like a big special thing. And then those universes just go back to being their own thing again. So uh, it's pretty unique aside from like how it's done in Marvel. Yeah. Marvel, it all has to connect and be one singular mm-hmm. story. And DC's like, eh, Joker, Batman. But they, you know, they could be setting up bigger villains. This Cord Industries is very similar to like a Tony Stark type of thing, a technology mm-hmm. company, but they don't have the best intentions um i've heard not a lot of details but the dude's dad the cord the and i'm butchering it because i have i know the name i think it's timothy cord but he was one of the blue beetles and his dad is like a kind of villain that's all i really know about him so kind of maybe like a vulture type situation where like oh that'd be he's cool. someone you know is dad and he plays like good guy on the surface but really he's like trying to capture the blue beetle Theodore, Stephen, Ted, Cord. Yeah, Teddy. The second. Yeah, because yeah, there's been three. There's been three yep. Blue Beetles, which is insane. And I and, think it's know, the first one that meets uh, Chris Scott or whoever the Peacemaker Smith. or Chris yeah, Smith. You, yeah. So I think those two guys know each other. I wonder if they would dive into that at all. Like, the, I saying. wonder how much of the lore of the Blue Beetle will be will be looked well, after. If, if? If, like, if they are like this is like a character who's been around for a period of time. And what if James Gunn is doing this 
like low key yeah. setting up a universe with DC. A lot of people have been thinking that since he did the uh, Suicide Squad movie and it was a big ensemble and they were literally giving him liberty to use any. He said any ancillary character he wanted. So uh-huh. maybe they're testing him, testing the waters a little. All right, peace. I, I love Suicide. I thought the Suicide Squad was a mm-hmm. great film. I I just it hit like on every level for me. I just thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And Peacemaker, I, we don't have to talk about how big of a hit or success that was. Critically acclaimed, audience acclaimed, number one mm-hmm. sh- in the world, the number one stream show. Like Crazy, that's dude. insane for for an, for a hardcore R rated. <laughs> yeah, John Cena, hard hard mm-hmm. R. You know, no holds bar. They didn't hold anything back. They just took it all yeah, balls man. to the wall. They did it all, and they got away with it. And and he is coming back after Guardians is wrapped. I think he's done with Marvel, and he's heading back to DC. He's working on at least a TV show for them, possibly a movie. You've got to think that. You know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago when the executive over at HBO Max said that he thinks that they've got a really good foundation for DC going on. You've got to think that that James Gunn being brought in for the Suicide Squad and then Peacemaker and that relationship. I think he was a big factor in that and and Mm kind of like kind of like a Favreau with the early days of Marvel, right? Because he did Iron Man and he was very he he was a big voice in that room getting getting to that first Avengers film, right? He almost directed the first Avengers film, but there was Mm -hmm. whatever. But like he was like Gunn almost feels like he's that he's not Feige level or anything, but he's like Favreau where he's got his feet securely planted on the ground. He knows what's up. And he's helping direct these characters and franchises. Dude, you know what I need? I need a Suicide Squad Batman Nightmare Verse tie-in. <laughs> Give me James Gunn Suicide Squad set in the Affleck Joker Nightmare Verse where the Suicide Squad is trying to kill Superman. That'd be wild. Just like the I'd video game. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. Just like, yeah, I can't Yo, wait for that game. <laughs> I'm hyped on that game. Let's go, guys. I'm I'm hyped for Blue Beetle. Like this, like I said, Injustice Two. Because of that, he's my favorite superhero of all time. No, but like a good character. Like reading, is. he is a good character, and there's three of them you can play around with. Lore. This and kid's with gonna crush it, backstory. Too, man. He's gonna be. I haven't seen Cobra Kai. Are you, are you a Cobra oh, Kai fan? Oh, he's so good. Yeah, I haven't is finished he? the last season, but he's so good in it. So good. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard. I've only heard good things, and I asked some people about him, and they say he's great in it as well. And I, yeah. I'm a. I just think that. The great thing with these lower level superheroes, Marvel uh, proved that you can make them top tier level heroes, right? Iron Man mm-hmm. can now stand toe to toe with Batman and Captain America and mm-hmm. Thor and Ant Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Like these characters are now in pop culture. They are almost as popular as Superman and Batman and whatnot. So it's absolutely. It's, yeah, I just can't wait. Uh, but as our Blue Beetle talk, let's move on now, Scotty, to uh, my most anticipated movie of all time. If you've been watching the channel, you would know that there's no movie I'm looking forward to more than Batgirl. Batgirl! <laughs> you had me in the first half, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, man. I, it's, it's sticking to HBO Max. It's December HBO Max. Which is, you know, Blue Beetle moving is one thing, but Batgirl's not. I, it, that might be a little concerning. The only thing, though, is 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 like J.K. Simmons, I don't know, but Michael Keaton returned. I don't think he would just return for anything. There had to be something mm-hmm. there for him to want to return for. And he seems happy to be back. He posted last week that picture on Instagram of his of his silhouette, his shadow on the ground of the him in the cape and cowl. Like, yeah, he's he, he loves being Batman. Uh, but obviously, he, he didn't want to come back for Batman for for nothing. So we have HBO Max here. Does that concern you at all with the Batgirl movie? Well, I was curious. Does this have a rating yet? Have they told us no. what it's rated? No. So I, I mean, if, so if they go dark with all this HBO Max stuff, man, that would be a yeah. very welcomed surprise for fans. I think regardless of what you expect of the show, but if they keep going dark and there's... um. Maybe it's from Flash, but the bat suit with the blood splatter. On yeah, it, that's yeah, from the that's Flash. Flash. Yeah, but there so is I mean, a there is a, um, a set picture of Batgirl in costume, full makeup, and bloody, and she is she is bloody. Yeah, man, this could go kind of dark, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep pushing for the Gotham Knights, like bring all of the Batman sidekicks and have Keaton lead them to become like a team. Yeah, I love your idea. And just have them live in the HBO Max. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, because everybody I think is anticipating Batgirl to replace uh, Batman Beyond, and I don't think that's the case. I think the idea of Gotham Knights makes more sense, mm-hmm. and it's and, and the thing with Gotham Knights over this just being a a variation of Batman Beyond is you get more characters out of Gotham Knights, and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. you can branch those off into their own separate things, and they can come back for their other stuff yes. in Gotham Knights again, and you have more and more. And I don't and- know why you want to do that. And Terry McGinnis is not in, he's not a Gotham Knight. So the whole, yeah. the whole series could play out. And we let Michael Keaton get even older, bro. And then, and then introduce your uh, Terry McGinnis and do the Batman Beyond when it's just like Batman in a wheelchair. You know what I mean? Like he's just trying to mentor this kid the best he can. <clears throat> Absolutely. There's no point in rushing to yeah. the Batman Beyond anyway. I really like, hope we, okay. Everybody can... wants it. But Slow yeah. Play. Exactly. I'd love mm-hmm. it, but let's, you know, let's take our time. Let's get there. Let's tell some stories yeah. first. And we'll get like, we had to go through Batman, the animated series before we got the Batman mm-hmm. beyond. Um, there's other, there's Batman, the animated series. Super, there's a lot in between the first time we got Batman in animated form to Batman beyond. And we're talking, but there about, is a connection to, sorry. And we're talking about like big team ensemble things. Like this is yeah. phase one. Like this is how I'm really trying to like, they're putting individual yeah. stories, grounding the characters, but like, just keep it slow. Get a phase one, a phase two, bring in a Thanos yeah. guy. Like, cause I want us to work up towards Brainiac, towards like Bizarro, like really high powered threats. Like Lex Luthor is not, he, he's, where is he? You know what I mean? Where is our yeah. Lex Luthor? Where are well, our he's villains? ER now. Yeah. Um, I, I like to think now the Snyder verse as being like the prologue. <laughs> to the yes. dc universe right it's kind of like this <laughs> mm-hmm. was the before this is what you need to know that's yes. your backstory and now we're now we're in full flight i think that's yeah, maybe yeah. what they're doing right like okay that stuff exists but we don't have to worry mm-hmm. about it too much because because the snyder stuff is is very intriguing because it, you know people kind of liked it when i don't they like man of steel batman v superman i think they were kind of like eh. and yeah. you know then just like was it but then there are people who are obsessed over it right like just absolutely obsessed so you can't just kind of say it doesn't exist and I think Peacemaker was a great bridge to be like, no, it's real. It, like this is part of it, but we've moved on from that, and and this is how it is now. And I think, and it and it's funny, Scott is is that scene in Peacemaker looked the closest to a Snyder film than anything from James Gunn has Too in funny. the past, right? It, it was like it was nighttime, mm-hmm. it was brooding, and it was like it was like every, the not a Marvel set, set or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we live in a simulation. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's so well. At least they're working together. That, that yeah, that's cool. awesome. No, it's great. It gives potential. It does. Speaking of potential, <laughs> Batgirl, Batgirl has a connection though to the DCEU that we've already seen and loved. I don't know if you know this or not, but mm-hmm. uh, it's been there's been sightings on the set. Uh, Craig Williams tweeted it out a picture from the. It's on location in uh, where they are. It's not a close okay. set or anything. It's on location, but one. But uh, Batgirl has a connection to Wonder Woman. Woman Scotty, not just mm. Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four, the greatest sequel of all time, the one that everybody loves. Wonder Woman eighty four. No <laughs> I actually like Wonder Woman eighty four. <laughs> I, you know what? It's I actually um, I own it. Don't ask questions, but mm-hmm. I own it and I watch it and I was like, eh. and it was a movie last year that I put on, uh, just like in the background, I just threw on Wonder Woman eighty four. I just threw mm-hmm. it on, just kept throwing it on. And then at uh, Christmas time, my nieces and nephews were over, and they wanted to watch Shazam, but they had seen it already. And I said, "Well, why don't mm-hmm. you watch Wonder Woman too?" And they're like, "No." And I said, "No, you haven't seen it." And I put it on, and they watched Wonder Woman. They got halfway through, and then they had to go home. Mm-hmm. And and they went home, and and they went they went to their dad's house, and they they wouldn't shut up about the movie. That they mm-hmm. made him buy it on Prime. They made him buy the movie so that they could keep <laughs> watching it. So I don't know what that says about me. I have the same, you know, taste as ten year olds. But it's a movie. We'll leave it at that. But yeah, anyway, but, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Batgirl, Batgirl has a connection to it though, and I'm not too disappointed because it does exist. And this is from Craig Williams on Twitter. He posted a picture of a van with Stag Enterprises. Stag Enterprises is on mm. the van. Stag uh, Simon Stag is a Batman villain who was seen in Wonder Woman two, and he owned I think it was Stag Enterprises for oil or something, and then okay. and then they and uh, what's his name Max um yeah Pedro Pascal mm-hmm. wished him to be in prison and he got arrested and he went away and whatnot. So we don't know where Wonder Woman two is going to stand after the Flash, after the Flash movie. We don't know where Batgirl is, but 
Stag is a name, whether it's the same one or not, Stag is a name that is remaining in the DCEU for now. And it's good to see. I mean, this is look, Scotty, let's be honest. This is probably just a small little Easter egg that they put on there for, for mm-hmm. hardcore fans like Wayne Enterprises on the satellite and Man of Steel. Just probably something small. Right. But what do you think about the possible connection to Wonder Woman 84? I like it. I think they should do more stuff like that. And, you know, Easter eggs like that that blow up get reconfirmed or you know retconned recontextualized into stories so yeah if they're able to work that stuff in and and it makes sense all for the connected connective tissue yeah why not i think yeah i this this bad girl movie i at first i was like whatever but now i'm really selling myself on it so it better be top tier better be top tier dc otherwise you'll be hearing from my lawyers Mm -hmm. warner brothers because mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll, we, actually i think i'll be getting it in canada we don't have hbo max but i think we will be getting it because it's a an hbo max movie i think we will be getting it same day so that's good news for for me i think both companies marvel and dc are still trying to figure out where they fit in tv land and i'm telling you hbo max's uh dc land should be hard r uh, cl- as close to r pg-13 as you can for a lot of this stuff in my opinion it worked for peacemaker right and it's yep. Yep. I, I know they want I, and like all the know, fans I, that grew up with this stuff we're older now and our kids yeah. you know will enjoy the cartoon stuff still but i think joker proved it peacemaker uh-huh. is proving it like worldwide guys come on and come that's on. we have we're going to talk about the batman tomorrow if you're not sick of me by then but ah. but we're both we're both seeing it tomorrow and i'm mm-hmm. really curious it's a pg-13 he, they Reeves was not allowed to make it rated R, so he was never intending yep. to make it R, but he wanted to push the PG-13. And what you said about Joker is, is really, I want to see how hard it goes on the 13. Because because the thing with that, it mm. doesn't need blood and it doesn't need swearing, which are the two things that are going to give you the R, right? So right. The, the Joker, I think because he's a villain and because of what they were doing, it, it needed both of those and that's different. But I'm, I'm, I want to see how close it is to the Joker on what level they feel like the same universe, not necessarily right. that I'm saying they're going to be combined, but are they going to feel the same? And are they going to allow, cause I saw some, <laughs> the reviews for Batman are crazy, but I saw some that said it was too dark and this is not yeah. what we need in this day and age. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but, but it, would you, the, I'm, I'm stumbling on my words cause I can't articulate that. You know, if you went to go see Zodiac, let's say Zodiac, did you come out mm-hmm. of the theater saying it's too dark and there's no we need in this? Like, is that right. what you're saying? If, if it wasn't Batman, right. how would you feel? Remove Batman. Because I always say the Dark Knight, as great as it is, you remove Batman from that movie, it remains just as good. It's yeah. just, it's a good cop movie, right? And and I haven't, you know, Batman, we haven't seen, we can't comment on it, but I'm really curious how it's going to, how it, how it'll look like compared to the Joker. I think the too dark stuff is just a personal preference. I know a lot of people who are big, big fans of Batman and they're going into this like, man, I'm just ah, the psychological, like scary horror type stuff is not really my vibe. So I think if you're totally not into that type of storytelling, this might not be for you. And it also kind of scares me because if that girl is in any way campy, uh, doom patrol comes to mind, like, if it has any of that kind of stuff in there and they really just knocked our socks off with this super dark Batman, don't know how people are going to respond to this. I, I, uh, harpen back to like some CW stuff. So like they can have really, really big misses, but they've had really big hits. They just got to yeah. figure out where their balance is. You know, I think Batgirl needs to feel like it lives in the flash Aquaman Shazam world. Ooh, and I yeah, think I like that's that. going to be the world that, right? I think that's the world's got to live in. So I don't, it's going to, there will be probably comparisons to Batgirl to the Batman. And I don't think they'll be fair. And for either mm. of the films, to be honest, like if you're into what Batgirl brings, but you don't like the, it won't be fair because I think they're completely separate universes. I think this is, we had the Snyderverse and Reeves is doing the Reeves verse now. And Batgirl is part of the DCEU verse with, and I think it's going to fit in with Wonder Woman, Aquaman. And um, and Shaz- Shazam especially. I think Shazam is the direction they're really pushing. The- well, I mean, Aquaman made a billion dollars, right? So I think those are the ones that they're really harp- harking down on. And that's what Batgirl will connect to. It's not it, I, but I, But that being said, it might go Peacemaker too, right? Because Peacemaker, it can't be 
but it's bloody and they're swearing mm-hmm. and it just doesn't give a damn and it does what it wants. And I don't think we're going to get swearing in Batgirl. Yeah. I don't, I think they're going to, I think Batgirl lives on the, the Warner brothers, Batman page where they both have to be treated the same. And maybe Superman yeah. too. You don't put swearing in Superman, but I think those yeah. are where, where they are, but I, I'm looking forward to it regardless. And I, I'm looking forward to the Batman. Batman's one. Batgirl's number two now, Scotty. Batgirl's mm-hmm. my second. Screw, do- screw Doctor Strange. Creeping up. Batgirl. Is- <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange is going to be rad. All right, mm. let's move on to the Batman. That's uh, not his voice at all. We're going to have a chance to see this movie tomorrow. Spoiler, non-spoiler review, Thursday, 10 p.m. And a spoiler review, 3 p.m. on Friday on the channel here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, if I don't like this movie, I don't know how I'm going to talk about it for two days straight or yeah. probably even more but actually maybe i'll be able to talk about it more because that seems to get the views on youtube is the more angry you are the more people click on it but mm-hmm. i'm very excited to see it um i haven't really been re- reading too much reviews other than what i said those ones that are just kind of like it's too dark it's like well did you not see it's always funny to me when you watch a movie and the trailer perfectly uh, cap captivates what encapsulates what mm-hmm. the trailer is and then you complain about the movie it's like the book of boba fett mm-hmm. i thought that the trailer completely showed me what the show was going to be and when the show yep. came like well that was that was like what the trailer kind of promised me and the people are like ah! i'm like yeah but the trailer was you know i, I like mm-hmm. the trailer but it wasn't an over-the-top amazing trailer by any stretch of the imagination i heard this batman like, trailer delivers 100 percent on the vibe yeah yeah, yeah. so yep. i mean if you go into this movie expecting you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, you're not going to get it. You're going to get something completely different. It's dark, it's brutal, it's noir. But, Scotty, we got to talk about uh, the budget, apparently. Right now, this movie is projected to make around 140 opening weekend, which I, I think opening weekend is going to include this whole week of mm-hmm. screenings. But I don't know right. what they're going to do. But opening weekends, they're saying 140. It was 185. They brought it down to 140. The budget for this movie was projected at $100 million. But since ballooned to over two hundred million dollars, and that's yeah. not including advertising, I don't think. You know, it, it, it's uh, it's weird. You know, it's going to have to make a lot of money, earn a lot of money to make to recoup its costs. However, COVID probably played a big factor in all that. And if the movie is good, I think it's worth it. <laughs> I think this movie's going to blow up. You I'm think hearing, so? I'm hearing such good things. Like when you hear things about the score. And then you hear things about like Gotham City being shown, the like the most Gotham City we've ever seen, apparently. Uh, like we've seen little bits of Gotham and we're like, oh, it's just this crap hole city. But they really show you how bad people have it, I guess. So I really hope it connects us in this universe. I, I think I think it could go down as like, I mean, I've heard people say it's the best Batman movie like B- Batman movie ever. It's crazy. So I'm well, on the hype okay. train. Wait, let's talk about the best Batman movie for a minute here. You've got yeah. 89 returns mm-hmm. forever. Batman and Robin begins. Dark oh Knight, yeah. I forgot about Dark Batman Knight rises. And Robin. Yeah. Dark Knight rises. And then if you include the Snyder ones, you include the Snyder mm-hmm. ones. Let's be honest. And I love, I've loved every single Batman movie. I've loved every Spider-Man yeah. movie and every Batman movie. And I am a Homer for them and a shill and I don't give mm-hmm. a crap. Mm-hmm. but it's not the competition isn't fierce when you say the best Batman movie, right? Like 89. True, true. I don't know if that holds up for people. For me, that's, you know, top tier. And then uh, begins Dark Knight arises. I would argue are very good. Yep. Dark Knight's the one that people always gravitate to as being the best. So that's the only thing when people say it's the best Batman movie, it's, it's the competition isn't. Yeah. And I guess as an overall movie and like, People are using the word masterpiece like the script is always scripts always being talked about how these actors transformed themselves into the characters is always being talked about. I feel like I'm going to disappear into the world with these with these people. I think if it wasn't a Batman movie, it would be uh, looked at very, very differently because a comic book type. Yeah. Yeah. But back back to the budget, the Joker had a 70 million dollar budget and made a billion dollars and we just talked a little bit about how if this was if this lives in the same um not cinematic world but the same flavor Mm -hmm. as the joker could this movie make a billion dollars the difference being though scotty i want to hear your opinion on this the difference is the joker is a villain villain so when you go into the joker you expect dark brooding blah 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 and then death batman's a hero and i know we all know that this is a noir and everyone knows that but when you go into watch a hero movie 
are, is it, do people, are the expectations of the people different in a way where maybe this one can't reach a billion dollars because even though it's the same vibe as the Joker, maybe it's a better movie overall than the Joker. I, just throwing that out there is, you know, does it have a chance to make the money the Joker did because it's a hero and not a villain? Yeah. And it's tough because the Joker did well because the Joker is supposed to be rated yeah. R. You know what I mean? Batman is a hero who's supposed to be dark, but you know, it's for kids too. And so it is a middle ground that you're trying to lean really dark on. And like I said, you know, friends of mine who are big Batman fans, I don't think we're going to enjoy this as much as like a over the top, you know, Cape Crusader type thing. This is a year two Batman who still really has no idea what he's doing. And he's just really fighting off instinct at this point. And which, angst. Raises, <laughs> which, which really raises, raises the questions is, is do people want a good movie or do they want a superhero film? And not to say that they both can mm-hmm. exist, but they can also if they can both exist cohesively, they can also exist separately. And that's what I think we're getting here, right? Yep. This is, might be this could be a good film, but as a superhero upscale film, maybe this isn't uh, what you're looking for. But it still it still could be an amazing film. Like we you know we did the video on the we talked about the reviews around Tomatoes, and it's fluctuating. It's going to mm-hmm. be somewhere in the in the mid to high 80s is where it looks like it's going to end up. It's certified fresh, so it's not going to go below 60 at any point. But again, it comes down to when you walk in that theater to watch a Batman movie, is this a Batman that you want, or is this a Batman mm-hmm. that you don't want? And it's funny, because when you think of the movies, you know, we, you just said, maybe this is the best Batman movie of all time. <sighs> you know, people have hated so many of the mm-hmm. Batman movies that have come. Do people actually yeah. like Batman? It feels like Batman is like Star Wars where everyone's had like a different entry point into what Batman is. You know, Adam yeah. West, Michael Keaton, the comics, the cartoons. And all of a sudden it's like, well, that's not my Batman. That's not how Batman is. But someone else is like, no, that's, that is how Batman Dude, it's is. It's actually, it just came to mind a, a familiar Star Wars quote before the dark times. <laughs> We're going to, we are going to literally be uh, what, like five, 10 years out. Star Wars is going to be focusing on acolyte and dark side stories. Marvel probably going to be going into like the demonic blade, potentially dark Avengers. Uh, DC is already thinking about justice league dark. We're going to be taking all our kids to these dark ass movies. And then we're going to be like, "Ah, I remember before the dark times (laughs) back when we had Tony Starks and like Iron Man's flying around. You know what? It'll, what'll be funny is is Marvel goes in that direction, and DC gives us all like the bright and shiny, colorful stuff. Yes, <laughs> some of you will uh, just flip the script on them. <laughs> they flip it up. They flip it up. Mm. So you you how? Let's just play a game here. What what do you think this movie is going to top at in the box office? You could break a billion. Mm. I have said some crazy numbers before, <laughs> um, but I want it to do like six hundred. 700 i don't know if it's going to get a billion but i want it to show out i want people to go re-watch it three hours and i heard it flies you know yeah. if you can get into the that's the thing like it's so descriptive and pull you in like i feel like if you don't get pulled in it's just not for you maybe and that is very opinionated but this movie is very niche i feel like it's going to be very niche so was it last earlier this week i heard from someone that i i i respect their opinion they said that they told me that the last like 50 minutes half hour to an hour of the movie somewhere around there was the best thing they've ever seen in the theater like it was mind-blowing but somebody else i know that i respect told me the ending was underwhelming yeah <laughs> they drag and i'm like you get okay. too much meat and potatoes that's what I was yeah. thinking. Like sometimes yeah. the middle of a movie can be too good, and you're just like, at the end, you're just like sweating. You don't know how to feel, and then you like kind of can't pay attention to the last part of the movie because you're still yeah. trying to digest everything. So I think people are gonna rewatch this in theaters, in IMAX, lots of practical effects. So I have seen multiple tweets to say that this is a movie you need to watch more than once, and I've seen people who have seen it more than once. These jerks who have seen it more than we haven't seen it once just get right back in line yeah like they're like i've seen it twice now and i gotta tell you the second time is way better than the first 
because because awesome. apparently you miss a lot. There's so much going on that you miss it, even though it's three hours. Mm-hmm. There's so much going on. It happens so fast. You blink and Amazing. you miss it. I'm looking Amazing. at this movie. I'm hoping this movie makes around seven. I'm hoping it crosses a billion like the Joker because I want I want these adult um, mm-hmm. these good stories, these solid films, like good films to earn the money in the box office. And and look, I mean, movie theaters are they're dying, unfortunately. People won't go see a movie unless it's Marvel, DC, Star Wars, right? Like that's just the world we live in. So if you can give mm-hmm. us a good story, uh, but you have to put Batman in it, then let's do it. Cause that's if that's what making people go to the theater, let's do it. I'd rather watch a good Batman movie that might not be, you know, flashy then uh actually i would watch batman and robin again who am i kidding i would <laughs> yeah 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 dude i hope uh i hope that the uh supposed villain that we think they're teasing is actually mad hatter and we've brought him up before yeah because i don't know if you've seen the meme yet but lighthouse so you've got robert pattinson and willem dafoe next to each other and then right below it is willem dafoe in joker makeup and robert pattinson <laughs> as the batman i don't think they'll ever do it but man, Willem Dafoe, Joker, fitting in here and side by side with Pattinson. Yeah, and I mentioned if you've seen The Lighthouse, you know that those two acting together is, and it the movie is look either mm-hmm. it's a movie you're gonna like or a movie you're yeah. going to like never like you're just gonna turn off within five minutes. I made but it all the way through two, Tusk. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I saw Tusk in the theater at uh, TIFF, yeah. and Kevin Smith came out and talked about it at the end. It was awesome. That's amazing, <laughs> dude. But The Lighthouse is a, it's a very strange movie. It, it, it's Eggers, so it is what it is. But those two, mm-hmm. their performances of just riffing off each other is just that phenomenal. Is. They they're both so good. So yeah, I you know what? I, I haven't been on board the Willem Dafoe train for the Joker yet because he's Green Goblin and I don't need him being yeah. every villain. Mm-hmm. But again, if you're gonna get those performances side by side again, I'm up for them yelling at each other all day mm-hmm. long. Uh, I can't wait for this. Let's hope it makes a billion dollars. Let's go see it a hundred thousand times this weekend. All right, let's wrap this show up. Scotty, thanks so much for joining me on this Wednesday for this little quick news brief that we did here to talk uh, DC today on DC, DC on mm-hmm. DC. And I'm wearing, I'm wearing Marvel and stuff. <laughs> Rep- repping Disney, talking Warner Brothers. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's funny. I have the, like, my kids got me the I love you 3000 pin. So it's like, oh, I'm amazing. Marvel too over here. <laughs> um, but Marvel. no, I appreciate you having me over here. I appreciate everybody that's come and found my channel. You guys mean a lot so yeah you, all the uh, kind words in the comments on the premiere last last night you guys are great yeah yeah thanks that was a great chat i want you to plug your channel quickly yeah it's hawks holocrons you can find me anywhere um instagram uh tiktok twitter real active on the twitter if you guys want to just shoot a theory out to me you know i'm out there so yes he's got some great great theories some great theories we're going to explore those on other shows it. on this channel because it's awesome but that'll do it for us on this Wednesday. You enjoy the rest of the day. Enjoy Batman. We are, Scotty and I are getting ready to watch it. Not at the same time, unfortunately, but we are getting to watch I'm the shaking. Batman really, really soon. It's coming. I can feel it. I'm, I'm less than 24 hours <laughs> away from watching it. Can't wait. Thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, give us a like, a subscribe, all that nonsense. And uh, until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.